is CGTN, China Global Television Network. China is set to hold its first peace conference for the Horn of Africa as part of efforts to enhance security in the region. According to Xue Bing, China's newly appointed special envoy for conflict-wrecked Horn of Africa, the conference is aimed at addressing key security and development challenges within the Horn. The purpose of China's proposal and appointment of the special envoy is to assist countries in handling regional affairs independently and achieve regional peace, stability, security and development, Shua said. This week on the program, we look into the significance of Ambassador Shua Bing's visit and China's new dialogue approach for the Horn. I'm Lindim Tongana. Welcome to Talk Africa. The purpose of China's special envoy, Xue Bing's visit, is to introduce China's outlook and to work with regional countries to provide Chinese solutions and contribute Chinese wisdom to the realization of peace and development in the Horn of Africa region. CGTN's Daniel Arabmoy has more on the proposed areas of focus as part of efforts to enhance security in the region. China has proposed three main areas of focus as part of efforts to enhance security in the Horn. The distinctive features of this proposal is not interference in internal affairs of regional countries and also African solutions for African countries. So although it is it is a Chinese proposal. The regional countries and the leading players. The Chinese role is to by holding the first peace conference in the first part of this year to provide a platform for regional countries to come together and to resolve their differences, differences independently without any external intervention. According to Xu He Bing, the Horn of Africa has long suffered from external Western influence and internal conflicts that have stagnated development. There, you know, some of the countries are just fed up with the foreign intervention. They are fed up with the preachings from the, from the Western countries. They said China respect us, China treat us as equals. So they want to see China to play more role, to play a more active and constructive role. To solve the issue of terrorism that is affecting the region, Xu He said the root causes must be examined and addressed. The Chinese special envoy for the honor of Africa singled out poverty and poor governance are some of the root causes driving terrorism in the region. The appointment of the Horn of Africa envoy for the first time by the Chinese government symbolizes the strategic importance of the region. The special envoy said China will continue to play a positive role in the Horn of Africa to spur development. Daniel Arab Moy, CGTN, Nairobi, Kenya. Let's now bring in our panel, all joining us via Zoom. In Nairobi, Dr. Hassan Kanenje, the director of the Horn International Institute for Strategic Studies. In Beijing, Professor He Wenping, who is a professor of African Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. And in Addis Ababa, Mr. Obang Metho, the executive director of the Solidarity Movement for a New Ethiopia. A warm welcome to all of you. 
I would like to start our conversation uh, with uh, Dr. Khanenje. Uh, now, Dr. Khanenje, in your line of work in studying security issues in the Horn of Africa, I'm sure you'd agree that the Horn of Africa has long been a troubled region with intractable conflicts. So why has China appointed a special envoy now? And what are, the, what are some of the active security situations in the region that are so deserving of that level of attention from the Chinese government? I think it's important to recognize that uh, there is an apparent vacuum, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, when it comes to peacemaking efforts in the Horn of Africa. Uh, and especially as traditional partners have been engaged in the region, are focused or train their attention elsewhere. Uh, and especially now the conflict over in Ukraine. And so we've, of course, uh, the declining security situation, uh, a series of instabilities and challenges, you know, to do with state collapse. I think China is going here, is seeking to provide that alternative that has been missing. And because also of the increasingly uh, deepening relations between China and the Horn of Africa, uh, China is finding itself a little more uh, acceptable, actually a lot more acceptable, uh, with regard to the Horn. And this is not just an initiative by the Chinese. It's actually also a request is coming from the Horn of African countries themselves. All right. Well, let's come to He Wenping now. Professor, we know that in addressing some of the challenges in the Horn of Africa, the special envoy has spoken about relying on the Chinese way and Chinese wisdom. What does this essentially mean when it comes to addressing peace and security issues in the Horn of Africa? Well, uh, China's way, you know, always relates uh, those uh, peace issues, security issue, to the root causes, uh, that is economic development, and also like a uh, governance idea. So this time around, uh, I also uh, follow uh, our special envoy, his activity, and this, he had put these things very clear. So three kinds of dimension. Uh, one is this uh, security issue, peacemaking issue. Second is development issue, uh, economic development. Uh, we all know uh, the country in the home of Africa, they also engaged with China's like One Belt, One Road initiative. So has been engaged in those economic development. So economic development that goes to address the root causes for all those, um, you know, those unstable issues. And the third dimension is talking, he's talking about like uh, governance, uh, some governance experience sharing. Uh, no matter uh, how, you know, uh, you know, prosperous your economic is, no matter, you know, how uh, those uh, security mechanisms and building is, uh, as if those uh, governance way, those thinking way, uh, you know, no longer fit in uh, with uh, those interests coming from different parties, and then eventually the security mechanism building will also end up in failure. So all those three dimensions, I think they have been interacted with each other. So they can be serving as a you know, good circulation and then that will bring the peace uh, you know, uh, as a whole. Mr. Obang Metho, let's bring you into the conversation now. Um, of course, one of the big announcements that emerged from the special envoy's visit is the fact that uh, China will host the first ever peace conference uh, in the region, the co-hosts being Kenya and Ethiopia. I want to ask you about your optimism of the potential efficacy of this peace conference, uh, particularly considering that Ethiopia itself is embroiled in conflict. How will it, this peace conference potentially address some uh, issues that are directly related to Ethiopia's situation? And what kind of mediation role does Ethiopia itself intend to play? Most of those countries, any countries that, you know, uh, who invest, they will follow their interests. So America and, and then Chinese are coming to Africa for their interests. Their number one cause is their national interest. So these issues of Kenya and Ethiopia having peace conference, these peace or dialogues is, you know, for these countries, they need stability. They need a stable countries in order for them to invest, in order to get a good return. So, you know, uh, how would that peace work? You know, it's, it's, you know, it's for us to wait and determine. But at the end of the day, these problems are created by these countries and it will be solved by those problems, by those countries. As you mentioned, in Ethiopia, there's a war within the country. The war is not yet ended. 
Uh, in Ethiopia, is you know, there's so many conflicts going on within particular countries. That problem is created by Ethiopia, and it will be solved by Ethiopians. The outsider will come in to just to do the support. Even, you know, I cannot believe, and I don't think that, I strongly believe that the peace and stability of Ethiopia would be brought by Chinese or by America or by anybody else. It's only Ethiopian who would be able to do that, and the foreigner will come and support them. So it's a good initiative for them to have a peace between Ethiopia, uh, having conference between peace conference with Kenya and Ethiopia together. It is in the West have interest in the Horn of Africa, in East Africa, as Africa as well. The question is, what are the Africans doing about it? So let's take a moment then to look at Kenya's interest. Uh, Kenya, of course, not technically a part of the Horn of Africa. So, Dr. Kanenje, what role do you think uh, Kenya intends to play in the context of this peace conference that it will co-host with Ethiopia? And I ask that also in relation to the fact of wondering about Kenya's own impartiality. As we know, Kenya is an occupying force in Somalia. Yeah, absolutely. Kenya is part of the greater Horn of Africa. It is... Uh not the geographical part per se, but the geographical part is very limited to so about you know two or three countries, which does not explain the complexities uh, that uh, take place in the home. And for Kenya, there is an interest convergence between Kenya, of course, Ethiopia, and especially China, in part because of the mutual recognition that stability is central for uh, mutual development as well as uh, economic investment that is you know is critically needed, especially on the continent. Now the Chinese have invested heavily. Uh, both in Kenya as well as in Ethiopia and within the Horn of Africa. And so uh, protecting uh, this interest, but also ensuring stability prevails so that uh, trade and investment can continue as critical. Kenya has been playing, I uh, think, a very instrumental role uh, in Ethiopia in the recent crisis, of course, which uh, is yet to be resolved. And I think because of the confidence uh, that both countries are developing each other and the closeness, but also as the two main anchor states within the larger Horn of Africa region, it is in the interest of Nairobi to ensure uh, that there is a peaceful uh, process in Ethiopia because what happens in Ethiopia not only affects Kenya, but actually has the potential to affect the entire Horn of Africa region and the Greater Lakes region. And so I think Nairobi's interest to ensure that uh, uh, they may be able, with the, especially now with the Chinese support, uh, supporting the kind of mediation process, perhaps bring an alternative uh, to something that has been lacking of course, in the region and ensure that the region is peace uh, and is peaceful for uh, both economics as well as for political stability. Uh, Professor Ho Wenping, I want to come back to you. You, of course, mentioned that one of the key pillars of China's approach is to focus on development. Uh, we have seen that China's development support in the region um, has been primarily in infrastructure development. Um, you know, we know we heard the special envoy Xue Bing refer to the two rail networks and the two coasts, uh, talking about this forming part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. So going back to the issue of national interest, what is the strategic importance of the Horn of Africa to China? Well, yes, uh, the Horn of Africa has enjoyed a very important uh, geopolitical location and also the business center like Djibouti uh, has, uh, you know, located in such an important uh, location. Actually, the China's uh, 21st century maritime Silk Road uh, has been gone through this area. That's why uh, Djibouti has been, uh, we, we have been engaged with Djibouti very much, uh, building, upgrade the port, and also like a free trade zone, and also linking Djibouti all together like with Ethiopia. That's why uh, uh, China, you know, need to uh, appoint uh, this uh, special envoy to bring China's, uh, this kind of uh, thinking and our idea and uh, our contribution for building the peace in this area. We don't want to see uh, those uh, uh, troubles or some uh, conflicts, uh, even military conflicts going on uh, in this area. Mr. Metho, let me come to you on that note. Uh, you, you've just heard Professor Ho Wenping talk about the infrastructure development that China has brought to the Horn of Africa. When you think about development, is this the kind of development support that Ethiopia is actually looking for? At the moment, the country is facing humanitarian crisis. There's drought, uh, economic issues that have been compounded by the coronavirus pandemic and an ongoing civil war. So essentially, does this speak to the development support 
that uh, Ethiopia needs at the moment? Uh, thank you. I think when we talk about the developments, you know, the development is actually what comes first is not development. What comes first is safety, peace and security and stability. Without peace and stability and security, there's no development. When you talk about the development, you're talking about the well-being of the citizens. So what comes first is not the development. What comes first is safety of the citizens. And then what comes is stability of the regions. When there's a problem, usually people who live there, they are not attached to those developments. And they end up destroying property. They end up destroying the things that which is there. So when you talk about development, sustainable peace comes first, security first comes first. So that's why you see this, you know, the special imposts, the American special imposts, and then, you know, the African Union, as you mentioned, of both China, and you see in the China and other groups. What I say earlier, this group, their work to me is temporary. The core special employees, or if you don't call the core group of people mm -hmm. who will solve the problem of Ethiopia, it is the Ethiopian mm -hmm. themselves. And starting it to have a genuine, meaningful reform that starts with a dialogue. That is for the well being mm -hmm. of Ethiopian people, not the well being of the tribe. So the outsider can come and say, we need development, we need peace. Unless the Ethiopian believe in that peace and security, mm -hmm. definitely no matter whether maybe Ubosanjo or the Chinese or the American will not bring the lasting change that Ethiopian are looking for. So nice. in other words, development doesn't come first. Peace and security and stability come first. Well, on that note, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll take a look at a third pillar of China's outlook for peace and development in the Horn of Africa, and that is governance. Stay with us. Welcome back to Talk Africa, and let's continue with our discussion. Still with me via Zoom in Nairobi is Dr. Hassan Khanenje, the director of the Horn International Institute for Strategic Studies. In Beijing, Professor He Wenping, who is the professor of African Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. And in Addis Ababa, Mr. Obang Metho, the executive director of the Solidarity Movement for a New Ethiopia. Dr. Khanenje, I want to bring you in uh, on this now for your perspective. Um, when there are difficult issues that are ethnic-based or tribal-based, uh, what role do you think or how important is the development that we're seeing China bring in, the infrastructure development that China's pursuing? Uh, how important is that in the pursuit of long-term peace? One thing that has proved uh, to work, especially in uh, developing economies, is with increased opportunities as a result of investment, a lot of people are taken out of poverty. And the moment you receive a sense of hopelessness among the population, a sense of desperation, it makes them less likely to actually take up arms. It makes them less likely to be recruited into extremist organizations. It makes them less likely to be mobilized along ethnic or regional lines. You know, that is science, that is, that is, that those are factual things. Now, as a long-term strategy, uh, for conflict resolution, it is something that is viable, is something that has been tested. Is the reason why most advanced economies, they're likely less, they're less likely to go to war, and they're less likely to actually be able to negotiate their differences. And so this is something that is, of course, you know, has to be tested on the African continent. Of course, there are other complexities that are always going to a cloud, uh, this African experiment, especially at, at nation state building. And one thing is clear to important to understand that uh, a number of many majority of African countries are fairly new, between 50 or 60 years old. Some of them are even less. And while the state is a theoretical Westphalian concept, nation state is a practical process, and it takes time and it's painful. And so, being able to be able to negotiate a lot of interests within a state are both political, which of course a lot of time revolves around resources and power distribution 
takes a while. And importing, for instance, foreign models to uh, try and uh, resolve some very, very local and unique challenges on the continent sometimes is not exactly practical. And I think that is why a focusing on development is, is one of the ways in which can, can be able to reduce tensions by affording uh, opportunity to a wide range of people so that you don't put, push people into desperation or in place of economic want in which they can become vulnerable to violence, to manipulation and exploitation. Now, Chinese Special Envoy uh, Xue Bing mentioned governance as the third aspect of China's outlook for peace and development in the Horn of Africa. Professor Ho Wenpeng, let me start with you. What kind of governance model is China encouraging in the Horn of Africa? In the process of our country's development, uh, even as a, you know, a region's uh, development, the key issue, the governance issue, to, is to address a balance uh, between like a development, reform, and a stability. Uh, governance doesn't mean like saying uh, you have a multi-party election and then you have a very strong like NGO. So all those elements affiliate with those liberal democracy. I think for the transitional, uh, this uh, economy and all those uh, developing countries, because we have been on the path uh, from a very low uh, those uh, starting point. Uh, both economically or even governance issue and then suddenly uh, you are involved in this uh, uh, e era of economic globalization and also the era of uh, information age mm -hmm. so certainly uh, we have uh, built on our own uh, this understanding about uh, governance uh, probably we can right. share uh, some of our experience uh, for how to uh, you know, bring the peace uh, in this region, home of Africa. Each country has their own concern. Uh, even different parties in one country, they have their yes. own concern. Uh, so it's not easy at all. No. Indeed. Well, Mr. Methu, uh, let's get your comment on this. Do you think that governance issues are a significant contributing factor to the peace and security or conflict situation that Ethiopia finds itself in today? And to what extent could Ethiopia borrow lessons from China's governance model? What kind of governing is a question? What kind of governing is a transparent, inclusive, inclusive, transparent, uh, governance and that governance as we say uh, you know that has to be based what i said earlier on uh, you know uh, transparency accountabilities rule of law equal justice i think that you know these are some of the things that in the case of ethiopia for that when we talk about the governance the governing is that from the constitution of the country the constitution of the country that based on inclusive valuing all the citizens as one and then having an you know independent institution that what I call that you know no matter a country is like a vehicle. When you have a vehicle, if you change the driver, you don't change the cars, you know, and if the brake is the same brake doesn't matter, you change the driver doesn't make right, it would not go properly. So in the case of the governments, the good governing of any countries, it has the governance that based on, you know, starting with the constitution, a constitution that value individual right, give the freedom to the citizens, give an equal opportunity to everybody. Then where they have independent institution, independent judiciary, independent media, independent defense, independent technology, economy, all of those things that we really work together and give the citizen. So it has to be an inclusive, system governance that put the interest, the well-being of the people. So inclusive is not a Western, not liberal, not communist. It is a system where you treat a citizen, treat a human being as a human being, right. individual right. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Metho. And it brings me back to something Dr. Kanenje mentioned earlier on, the challenges of the formation of the nation state. So, Dr. Kanenje, when we look at the notion of African solutions to African problems, where does this take precedence or where does it give way, perhaps, to solutions coming from other parts of the world, specifically China? As we mentioned, China's approach will be China's way and China's wisdom. Is there room for that in these governance challenges we see on the continent? 
I think um, ideas are not exclusive to a particular country or a particular region. And I think we've all borrowed ideas from one, one of many cultures, you know, by the time we've gotten to where we are. And so we expect that uh, we're also going to learn a number of things uh, from the way the Chinese have managed their affairs. And an example being, um, the Chinese economy has largely followed its political philosophy. And the tragedy with African economics, and especially our states, uh, has been our kind of models, and we talk, you know, just uh, touching on what our colleagues you know, discussed on governance, has managed or has tended to create a lot more vertical growth politically, uh, rewarding the few, uh, as opposed to horizontal growth. Economically, it has been the same. What we've ended up is creating 100 millionaires and 100 million peasants. Now, that is a recipe for disaster, is a recipe for chaos, for revolutions and civil strife. And therefore, uh, perhaps uh, taking a leave from a country that has lifted, you know, more than half a billion uh, people from poverty, you know, in less than 30 years, perhaps, you know, that is something and direction can go. But I also agree that uh, this model, of course, is also inclusive because to be able to raise people out of poverty and put them on a, on a trajectory of, of growth and stability is going to, in, to, to, to ensure that you are uh, pursuing a more horizontal uh, uh, approach, not just towards governance, but also towards economic development. So you can put as much money as possible in people's pockets uh, without you know, you know, wrecking the boat. Now, now I do not think uh, the Chinese envoy is coming uh, with any uh, predispositions or is naive enough to actually just you know, come and impose, let's say, Chinese version of the way they do things. I think China has been very sensitive to, uh, to African interests and needs. And I think that is one reason that has uh, gravitated African countries actually towards uh, trying to learn from China, but also trying to do business with China. And so we expect that the continent is going to find uh, you know, its way around uh, increasingly, of course, save for a number of things that have taken place in the last couple of years, there is an increasing, you know, pan-Africanism and an increasing sense of nationalism that perhaps is about time for Africans to own their own solutions to their own problems because uh, years of foreign intervention has not exactly assisted. In fact, it has fueled a number of crises that exist on the continent today and lack of robust or alternative uh, ways of resolving conflicts has stalemated and frozen some conflicts. And so this intervention or this uh, initiative, I see it as a timely, but it's an addition to ongoing initiatives that perhaps if they can converge at some point, uh, there's likelihood that uh, the peace and stability in the Horn of Africa region, the Great Lakes, is going to be achieved sooner rather than later. And I want to just come back to you on that, uh, Dr. Kanenjo. You mentioned that foreign intervention in the past has at times brought, brought more trouble than it's worth. So one has to wonder in what way this will be different. The appointment of a special envoy from China certainly marks a, a deepening of ties between China and the Horn of Africa, but how will we measure its success? Results. If, 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 if the efforts made by the special envoy uh, we can see that it's pushing the parties towards certain resolutions, whether it's in, 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 um, in Ethiopia or, or elsewhere. Of course, then we're going to say that I think uh, this is different and uh, you know, it's likely that perhaps uh, we should pay more attention to this. But one thing that's going to be critical though, and okay. one of the challenge of course that the envoy may face is that you have other players you know, in the region. There's a lot of interest in the, in the region and countries have invested heavily and have an interest like China, I think it's about time they also became more active uh, in contributing to the peace and stability. Thank you so much, Dr. Kanenje. That is all we have time for on this edition of Talk Africa. A big thank you to our panel of experts in Nairobi, Dr. Hassan Kanenje, the director of the Horn International Institute for Strategic Studies in Beijing, Professor He Wenping, Professor of African Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, and in Addis Ababa, Mr. Obang Metho, the executive director of the Solidarity Movement for New Ethiopia. Remember, you can be a part of this conversation through our social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter. And you can watch this and other editions of Talk Africa on our YouTube playlist. 
Do join us again next week for more of Talk Africa. From me, Lindy Mtongana, and the team here in Nairobi. Until next time, goodbye.